Today, we sew. What? Oh, as a matter of fact, I did get a haircut since I last saw you. Thanks for noticing. At this moment, Kenny realized that he had paid the most money for the worst haircut that he had ever had. And as I've learned, contrary to popular belief, I am not bald. Hey everybody, I'm Kenny. This is Sagebrush Soul, and we are finishing up the seats to the Bad Dog Golf Cart. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I'm not good at this. I've been working at it for years, off and on. I've given up a lot of times. So far, this is the first one and it's the best product I've had. I'm gonna show you how I did it. This really shouldn't be considered a tutorial. In fact, Brandon from DIY Love Life knows how to do this stuff really good, and Brandon, this is a challenge. In fact, I'll bet Jill doesn't even know you know how to do this, and I'll bet she could find you a project to make a video so that these people can actually get a decent education. So some of the stuff that I'm using on this that you're probably gonna to wanna to have on hand is a soft tape measure, one of these cool see-through rulers. These are awesome, I use them in leather and pretty much everything else I make. If you have it, a rotary cutting tool is handy, but scissors are fine. And you probably know what they look like because I don't know where I set mine. And then this is the cheapest vinyl that Hobby Lobby had to offer. And because it's only a two-way or almost a one-way stretch, it you're not gonna get a show car finish out of it. You kinda need a four-way stretch. And I don't even know if they have that at the stores. You might have to order that. If we ever, which I think we will, wind up redoing this project, I'm definitely gonna do a four-way stretch, but I just keep practicing, trying to get a little bit better at doing this, because I think there's some stuff coming down the pike with Live A Little, that it'll be a handy thing to have. And like I said, I've just always wanted to do it. And again, this isn't necessarily a how-to. I need to get it done, and I need content, so that's why we're doing it. So the first thing we need to do on the vinyl is make the part, uh, I think this is called boxing style thing that we're doing here and I think that this is called the boxing on this side of it so we're gonna take a measurement on that and this one I already know is like five and a half feet yours will vary and I've already cut my piece and because I am really not very good at this I actually marked my seam allowance and the seam allowance is how much on this side your seam is gonna be you'll see what I mean in fact the length that I already cut I cut it at uh, 84 inches, so like I got like an extra foot just to make up for my uh, idiocy and didn't make any sense to trim it down where it was that close. So then we're gonna wanna figure out our height right here. This is four and a half inches. I went six inches on this and it's a good thing I did because you're gonna lose a half an inch in the seam allowance and that seam takes up a little bit of fabric, especially this stuff that's not the easiest in the world to work with. It's a very stiff fabric. So I would recommend going at least an inch and a half over on this side. And we're only gonna sew two sides of it. As you can see on this one, the back is empty. I'm gonna put a piece of metal back here that I paint or uh, a piece of quarter inch plywood or something like that that I wrap in the same color vinyl to finish off the back. I didn't really think that through when I designed it, but we'll do something to kind of cover and protect this area and make it look better. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is mark the center point of the boxing and again because i'm a rookie i marked my seam allowance on there too it's going to come in handy a little bit later uh, because of my lack of skill level now you really should shape this a little better i've got the rough cuts from the carving knife still exposed i'm going to pull it pretty tight so they're not going to be that noticeable but when i redo these with a little bit better material after we figure out what the theme of that golf cart is going to be and i'm a little more practiced up i will definitely shape these like i did on the motorcycle seat with my little die grinder. The next thing we wanna do is kinda, we're kinda tucking that in a little bit because we're gonna trace this out, but make sure and don't put the foam right against the edge trying to save fabric because that's gonna mesh up because you need that half inch, at least a half inch seam allowance around there. So we're gonna go something like this on all sides, find my marking thingy. Let the furnace kick on. Try to get as close to that line and I'm trying to push it against the wood. We have got one as best I can to get a nice accurate shape. The closer you get it, 
to that and there's there's better ways to make patterns but again I'm kind of rushing through it you can see I'm pushing the foam in keeping the pen against that trying to keep it as straight up and down as possible but also kind of against that foam to make sure we're gonna do it and uh, here again if you are watching this for anything other than the entertainment there are probably some videos out there that are a little bit better but I appreciate you stopping in and if you don't want to watch it just just walk away leave it running I really need those hours all right and this is a fabric marking pen that actually goes away with heat none of it's gonna be exposed so I don't need to worry about it but it's not a permanent marker and that kind of gives us a rough shape right there Ooh. now before we cut we're gonna mark that seam allowance on there come here and we're gonna cut that first because it's pissing me off it's kind of touched up my edge there a little bit I don't know if that's okay we're gonna find out get out of there what I love about these rulers is they're clear, so I can put my half inch thing on. They're made for sewing, but you can use them for so many other things. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center point of this. If you, uh, and I know where that is because if you watched the video where I made the seat backs, well, if you haven't, watch it after or go watch it now either way we were at 20 inches wide on that and I did check the measurement that is accurate so I'm gonna mark the center all the way down or at least on the seam allowance because that's where it all starts now to do the corners it's gonna mark some spots put the half inch mark on there and try to just match that angle as close as I can and we'll play connect the dots I haven't played that since I was probably six years old shaky all right so that's kind of what that looks like a little rough but it'll come together now we cut it out all right and there is our top piece one thing I am gonna do really quick is line up my center points and again even an amateur doesn't have to do this but I'm gonna use uh, this uh, tape It'll hold my edges together at least on a little bit of it. And line up those centers. The videos I have been watching, they don't even clip it or they just pinch it together real tight and send it through. But here again, any leg up I can get, I'm going to take it. Up. I don't know if about a sixteenth, but that's what that extra amount that I cut is for. Alright, I think I think we're good. 
This is gonna be pretty painful for a lot of you to watch if you already know how to sew, or even if you've watched people that know what they're doing sew. So I'm only gonna show you as much as it takes to get the point across, but we're gonna start at the halfway point at the top of the cushion, and then go down and hold back a few inches from where the two pieces are gonna come together. It'll make more sense when I get there. Now technically you shouldn't have to back stitch here because you're gonna overlap that stitch and lock it in when we do the other half, but I back stitch the shit out of everything. We're still on a tape, so I'm pretty confident, but I'm gonna go ahead and use some clips just to hold it in place. That corner is going to be a little waspy. So these are awesome. <laughs> Never buy pins again. So we're getting close to the corner and again this is not a soft vinyl. It is very stiff, very firm. And not in the good way. So making this corner is a bit of a challenge. In fact, I'm gonna put just a little bit of a dart in here to help it out. It might not be enough to make a difference. Take a picture and show you what I'm talking about because I don't think you can see it from over there. trying to get these corners as close as I can and with a nice arc because if you wind up going straight for a couple of stitches it really shows up and just keep those edges lined up as good as you can until you get to the straightaway and it gets a little easier and it took me many failed attempts to get just to this point so that little bit probably isn't gonna be the end of the world uh, I'm just hoping for a good look at 20 feet. I'm getting off my line a little bit there. Ah, shit, went too far. Well, as promised, I messed it up. I got, uh, got a little carried away, so I'm gonna pick back few stitches. I went past the seam allowance. Now it is fixable but this is probably the kind of thing that will show up in the finished product so once again we're not doing a show car. But I'm gonna lock that stitch down now. good time to change the battery all right we're at the corner so we're gonna cut a couple of more of those little dark thingies that I showed you got the needle buried to hold everything in place and you don't want to go any more than a quarter of an inch or half of your seam allowance when you do your uh, darts or slices or whatever I'm not talking about a Canadian cigarette either. It's a cut. This, I don't even know how to explain this to you. It's just, it's much easier with a soft vinyl or pretty much anything but this fabric. I got the, once again, the needle's buried holding everything together here. We're gonna kind of rotate it. Try to just lay it down as flat as it'll go. I'm gonna cheat again and put a couple of clamps just to keep my edges together, but the only problem with doing that, and I'm not doing it all the way, way down, I'm just coming a little bit at a time, is a lot of times your top and bottom fabrics will stretch a little differently, and that can create a problem. It's kind of fun to just let her eat on the straightaways, but you gotta pay attention to where this other center mark is and I'm gonna stop back at least probably two and a half inches so I'm gonna sew it to about right there I'm gonna mark that with a clip actually 
This is just something I just figured out. All right, once again, we're at the end here. Not necessary to backstitch, but guess what I'm gonna do? You should pay attention. All right, you can see that we got the boxing halfway done around the front panel. Now we are going to, I'm gonna overlap this stitch a little bit, repeat the process. I'm not gonna make you watch. I'll come back in at the next step and let the camera cool down. All right, I've got the other side done. You can see the center point here. That's how much I left. And what I'm gonna try to do now is bring these pieces together. Oh on that center line. It's hard to show you and me at the same time here. Right about. They're clipping it again, sorry. Rookie move here, but sticking a clip on, making sure that you got a pretty, pretty snug fit. Then what we want to do is, so this is all the extra that I had. <laughs> Way too much, but I'll tell you what, if you come short, it's a lot worse problem. I'm going to put a couple of marks on here so I don't waver. Sew those two together and then cut it all but a half inch. I need at least a half inch seam allowance on that too. So we got the, the top, I guess you'd call it here, the boxing down here. We're gonna cut a half inch seam allowance here, and then we are going to do a thing called a French seam. Just eyeballing the half inch here. But I do want it to be straight. Need about a one inch width of my scrap. I'm gonna fold these guys over. Take the scrap piece, lay it over the top of that. I'm gonna clamp it in place. And then we're gonna do a seam about an eighth inch away on both sides of that seam. Should make it really strong, I think, and French. Be like a croissant. Not sure how well you can see this, but again, just telling you what I'm doing. I'm gonna use the edge of the presser foot as a guide and to get that approximately eighth of an inch, I'm gonna move my needle from the center position, damn it, to the left position. And then when I do the other side, I'll probably have to switch it over to there. And you gotta make sure while you're sewing this that just everything kind of stays together. And I got a little wonky on here. I'm hoping it'll still be okay. Well, it's more like 3 16 and they're not exactly evenly spaced, but the good news is they're gonna be on the bottom, you won't see it. But she's tough. Get her rid of this extra little bit right here. And probably a little of this right here. It's not necessary, but it's bugging me. Oh, got a little crazy. We're gonna complete our seam now across this and make it one piece so we'll stitch from here to here and I got a bubble but I'm gonna try to stretch the top a little and even it out right, so I'm gonna take and trim a little bit off the corners 
and I really wanted to do a top stitch where you take all of it and lay it down on the boxing side and do a stitch all the way around that way but this firm of vinyl and my skill level it just is not gonna happen so I'm gonna trim a little bit off the corners but I did find that leaving the whole half inch actually works out better when you stuff the foam into it so you can uh, you've got something to reach in and get a hold of to get it to all lay on one side and we're gonna lay it on the boxing side We're gonna take a little off here too. Yeah, we're gonna try to get all of that seam allowance to lay down on one side and actually the more you have the better it works you just don't want this because that'll really mess up your finished look but uh, we're gonna let the camera cool down a little bit i'm gonna flip this guy now i'll flip it out flip it inside out and we'll go back down and we will staple it on so here's what i'm gonna do To get this thing turned inside or right side out and you really got to get up in the corners to push them out there that's why I trimmed a little bit of that stuff out of there I trimmed a little off the corners the rounded ones aren't gonna be as tough but these ones you really gotta uh, I think they're considered 90 degree angles. You really got to push those bad boys out. And then I'm going to try to convince this seam to lay against there. And we're going to have to reach in there and get it a little bit. I can already tell this one's a little more snug and that might be good. I'm just going in here now and convincing that seam allowance to lay can't really show you because I'm doing it by feel but just pulling that seam allowance around and that extra bulk on there actually helps you do this that one's in the wrong spot come on I'm gonna kind of make sure that we're lined up. Uh, this is just a, it's a rechargeable stapler that I bought at Harbor Freight. I think it was like 35 bucks or something, but it's really convenient. I've got a bunch of pneumatic staplers in the shop that I use for this stuff typically, but I find with the pneumatic ones, it's kind of harder to get them dialed in to where they don't blow right through the vinyl. You gotta adjust your pressures and everything. This one's not so powerful that it'll blow through that stuff. And I'm using these arrow staples and when you see the price difference you're not gonna want to pay it you definitely want to use stainless steel arrow staples on this if you don't do the stainless they're gonna rust they're gonna corrode and uh, really quickly anything that's gonna be outside if you're doing chairs that are gonna be inside no big deal buy the cheaper staples but uh, for this size staples I think it was about five bucks a pack these were almost 14 bucks a pack for the stainless steel ones so yeah they're quite a bit more money but it's gonna keep your work together. So I'm gonna pull this pretty snug right here. I'm just gonna knock a couple staples in. I'm not gonna to get too close to the corner yet. So we got three staples in. I'm gonna look and see if I like how it's lining up and I kind of don't but I'm gonna see if we'll be able to recover that this is where shaping that foam would have come in real handy it's pretty close I think it'll come into compliance here but
I think we've got a pretty good start. Once we start pulling it the rest of the way around, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna work the bottom. The research video that I watched between sewing this thing and coming down and trying to do this one better than I did the last one, I learned that more material is better. This is gonna be kind of hard to work with because that's all I can get a grip on it and then I gotta fit a staple in there too. So could have easily went like two more inches on this stuff because you can always trim it away. Now I'm just gonna put a couple right close to each other and look at it together. Not too bad. And without a doubt, pneumatic staplers are better. I'm not saying I'm not saying this is better, it's just a little more convenient for what I got going on, but it's even struggling to get through the vinyl and the plywood. I mean, it's just, it's not terrible for a rookie. And it's it's not a show car and it's sketchy material at best. So I'm gonna sneak up on this corner now. We're gonna have to make some relief cuts. And this is a little bit different than the 90, but the goal is, is to try to get the wrinkles to not be out here and get them back here where you can trap them down. I'm trying to figure out where that wants to bend. I'm gonna make a mark in there. This is kind of where it wants to flex right here, so I'm gonna make a mark. And then I'm gonna come in, take a decent hunk of material out of that. Well, not gonna be perfect. Feel free to comment, tell me what I'm doing wrong here. Other than using cheap material and that I know. All right, so I got the two sides of that down. Now I'm gonna give this a tug. Oh, that took, took a fair amount out, but I do have a wrinkle sneaking around the corner. The nice thing about staples is you can pull them out. binding up somewhere and again a lot of this is probably because I did not shape the foam so it's kind of grabbing that might find its way home eventually damn it trying to get the wrinkles to come back here My luck, the part that won't be seen will be the best looking part. And it's kind of coming together. A little steam and a little slapping might fill those corners in a little bit better. I might should have left that seam allowance on those corners because that might be what's uh, tangled up in there. That seam allowance is trying to find its way in there. So if I'd have had it lay over here, it might have laid a little bit better. Learning. I'm learning. Well, I tried to keep an eye on it, but uh, I don't know where I lost you. I looked up and there was no more blinky blinky going on on the camera, so it's a three battery project. But uh, we're just doing the final run of staples here. Trim off a little bit of the excess in here. I think she's pretty well held down. Seat's ready to go. The first one definitely came out a little bit better. I might have over pulled on that. I might have got it a little too tight. 
and crush those corners. So uh, before anything else goes wrong, I think we probably ought to teleport to Idaho Falls and see how they look on the golf cart. Hey seats, you gotta come too. So they fit good. They look pretty good. I haven't got them tightened down here yet because uh, I still need to figure out what to do on the back to protect the wood. But all in all, I'll take it. Like I say, hoping to do something a little more custom in the future. Well, everybody, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. Pretty happy with how the seats turned out, but when the snow flies in the off season next year, I'm gonna take it all the way down to the frame. There's a lot of repairs that need to be done on it there. Uh, there's some body issues and things like that. But we're gonna get it looking pretty new, very custom. And at that point in time, I'd like to do either some piping, probably and some piping, and uh, kind of a dual tone seat cover on it. But I'll practice on some other things between now and then. We'll spend a little bit more on the materials and hopefully have a better finished project. But I appreciate you sticking around. I just love learning stuff like I cannot get enough of it and I love making stuff so I hope that this inspires you to go out and try something that you've been nervous about or that you failed at several times because I'm going to tell you what I've been doing this a lot I've got a lot of projects that kind of turned out okay with upholstery but never taking the time to really have enough patience I'm always doing everything in a hurry as you've seen through some of these other videos but practice definitely makes at least a little better thanks for watching I'm Kenny. This is Sagebrush Soul, and may the best of your past be the worst of your future.